It's time to feel the rage. Welcome to Film Rage, where we talk movies in theaters, streaming, and classic films as well. Directors and actors, beware as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryce, and I'm part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, hey, Bryce. And Murray, who saw about 25 minutes of Jackass Forever. Apparently, he was enjoying it so much that he could not take any more and had to leave the theater. I cannot wait to hear his review. Hey there, Merman. Yeah. So with the introductions out of the way, let's rage on. Oh, it made me want to leave the bathroom too. So many penises on screen all at once. Well, <clears throat> thanks to all who've been supporting us. If you love our independent podcast, please support us and join the Film Rage community by joining our membership at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Film Rage YYC. All members get special episodes and content only for members and all members that sign up get a special limited edition Film Rage merch item. If you cannot commit to a membership, you can still buy us a terrible movie rental and dare us to see it. Thanks to all who've been listening so religiously for so long we can't thank you enough now give us some money so we can watch some terrible movies movies are back at canyon meadow cinemas we are open for your viewing pleasure with great new films opening weekly All health-regulated protocols are in effect for a safe and enjoyable experience. And don't forget, we should be your first choice for your next birthday party or special event. Can't make it to the cinema? We got you covered. Order concessions from our online store, and you can either choose curbside pickup or get them delivered via Skip the Dishes, Uber Eats, or DoorDash. For more details, go to canyonmeadowscinemas.ca. Here at CMC, we would like to thank you for your continued support. And we are looking forward to seeing you at the movies. You people are so glad this is not a video. We've got a face for radio. (laughs) Oh, we're there. Streaming. Yeah, we're streaming. We're just streaming. We're doing what? We're streaming, Jim. Even Satan Murray did some streaming on the weekend. Hell, Satan. Mm-hmm. It was a viewing party. Uh oh. What did we see? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we saw Row. <laughs> Row. <Ruh-roh. laughs> uh, on Shutter. Dumb, oh. dumb. Uh, Ro, also known as Soul, is a Malaysian film from director Amir Eswan that grabs the attention from frame one with its breathtaking visuals. And then when the little girl proclaims that everyone is going to die by the next full moon, I am pretty sure I did not blink from there on in. This is atmospheric terror at its best. Every carefully framed shot is perfect. The camera has minimal movement that leaves the viewer feeling immersed in every scene. There are shocking scenes that will stay in my memory forever. The six person cast is absolutely spot on perfect. Couldn't be any better. You literally could not have cast this film any better than they did. Every person looks and acts the part as naturally as could be. This is tense from frame one, and it only ramps up from there. There is no need for jump scares or cheap thrills. This is just dread and fear of the unknown captured perfectly on film in a way that will keep you mystified and in a constant state of terror, all while delivering one of the most beautiful looking films you will see this year. Roe was darn near perfect and was definitely Mondo. Oh my. I loved Roe. This was spectacular. Rotastic is what I'm hearing. Mur, so good. what'd you think of Roe? Did not see it. Oh, well then, that's enough of you then. So, what the fuck is with Malaysian horror films lately? So good! They are so fucking creepy. And how the hell did they get an eight year old girl to slit her own throat? <laughs> I'm just like, what? 
Did I just literally witness this? You also just spoiled like the best part of the movie. But I know. I'm sorry. It, I just had to say it. I'm like, I'm, I was I mean, gobstopped. I just left it at her saying, you know, you're going to die by the next full moon. But no, oh, you have to go in ahead and just wreck it all for everybody. say she dies from that. She may still live from it. Oh. Right? You don't know. Well, now you've not. just spoiled it. You literally nah, it just told us the films that we've seen lately. Yes. They all take place in a forest. They do. Yeah. I'm like, where like anything could be potentially lurking. Or should I say, God knows what is lurking. Yeah. Right from the beginning of this film, the music and atmosphere is creepy, creepy, creepy. So good. And has such a nice level of what the fuck am I watching. I was loving this from moment one, as Bryce had said. And let's talk about Amir Eswan and this being his first feature oh. film. Awesome. Like, uh, Give excuse me, more. me? Apparently... He's actually known for visuals, though. So you can imagine what we got for the FX in this for such a low budget. You can tell it's low budget, obviously. But you can tell that when they put the money into it, it was the effects that really did it. And you can see how his effects background influenced this work for sure. As with most Malaysian horrors that I've seen, I'd say in the last couple of years, they are entrenched with folklore and tales of old evil. Yep. And this type of horror, if done right, is always unsettling. Plus adding in a CLF or multiple CLFs. Yeah, the, two, just, the two girls were amazing. Oh, just adds to the impact because they are both adding to the creep and also the purity and innocence of the children. And what is looming makes it even more horrific. There is something creepy everywhere on the ground it's like you're you're like oh uh i found this kind of interesting creeping under the house creeping in the grass creeping under the trees there was a lot of creeping if you can haven't noticed already i'm saying the word creep a lot in this <laughs> it's creepy lots of really great stuff in this oh although i have to mention okay, there is mean? a bit of vagueness in this at times which i did find a little bit uncontrolled so <clears throat> I, I did, I was fully immersed in the film from moment one, but as it starts to continue to progress, the vagueness of the film, I think this is just my opinion, because it's the director's first directorial debut, the vagueness of the film doesn't tighten up through the end of the film. So for me, as much as I love this film a lot, I think there could be some tightening in there. I don't, I maybe didn't like it as much as you. Oh. So... I so much ob obviousness, but at the same time, nothing is really said or explained in this film. What's creepy, the film is horrifying. The film has no story really whatsoever, and yet it is still a fantastic low mondo. Not high mondo. It's a low mondo, and I'm saying but that it's only... Mondo. It's still a mondo. Mondo! <laughs> yeah, I, I... I was... It sat, it sat with me because the first viewing that I watched it, I actually watched it twice yeah. because the first viewing I watched it, I'm kind of like, okay, the vagueness was actually bothering me the first time I watched it, to be quite honest, because it's like there's a lot of seeds that are planted and I don't need things to be explained. That's not what I'm saying here, but I'm saying that the fact that he kind of moves you in a few different directions and it doesn't clean itself up as it continues to progress. The second time I watched it, the vagueness didn't bother me as what much because I had the story embedded in my soul already. I'm now, I have sleepless nights because of some of the scenes in this movie. But uh, so good. it's such it's such a powerful film, and and I gotta say, I'm I've I've never seen a Malaysian horror film. I think in the last two years that hasn't been at least meh. Yeah. Right and and usually high high man at worst because there, yeah. there's, there's something there. There's it's time. atmosphere. You know yeah. the again the the ambiance of the film as you're watching it yeah. out in the forest. Like you can't have. I mean, if this movie was again, I, we've talked about this before. But if you're in North America or you know even I guess the parts of Europe and Eastern Europe maybe, but I'm, you can't have a movie like this. It's like. It can only come from a country like Malaysia. Yeah. It, it's they, they have have I don't want to say they're not gypsies, but I mean here they are in the middle of nowhere, 
you're thinking to yourself, first off, how do they eat? How do they sleep? Like, what, what's, what, how do they make their life? But it really doesn't matter. It's just you get immersed in this film, and it's yeah. just it, it just there there isn't there really isn't a wasted shot in the film either. Everything that's on screen is worth looking at. Yeah. Um. Just oh, it, the way that it builds and just. I just, I can't even put into words how much I love this movie. Apparently, I, you're speechless. Which I, was, is... I, was so, I was so taken by every, and everybody. Like, they couldn't have cast it any better. Like, there are only six characters in this movie. And they are all perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I can't believe the acting of the kids. Like, yeah. they're just, I don't normally like kids yeah. at the best of times. I mean, but the, these kids were fantastic. The mom was great. The the lady from the side of the hill was great. I mean, everybody was great. And they all had a look. The hill people is the what hill, you're saying. The hill people. <laughs> it kind of felt a person. bit like that. It's Malaysian. The hills have eyes. This is what we're watching here, people. <laughs> but, yeah, no, this was fantastic. I, I am looking forward uh, to the to next the, film he does. Yeah, to yeah. the next film that uh, As Amir Aswan. As Aswan. As am I. I haven't been this excited about a director since Mickey Reese. You had to ruin it, didn't you, Grace? <laughs> you literally had to ruin you the You know feelings. that's high praise from me, though. Yeah, that's high praise for you, but it's literally... It's it's actually literally slapping me in the face. I am looking. If I can segue I with slap face. Uh, is that where we're going? Because I don't think we are. Oh, aren't we? No. Oh, damn it. I thought it was a perfect segue, too. <laughs> So good, except for we're not going to talk about Slapface quite God yet. God damn it. All right. Well, I guess we're talking about another movie we got to stream, we which are. I've got to, ha- I have to make sure that I point this out. This was Bryce's choice. It's Bryce's fault. And I forever want to say, Bryce, you don't get to just make choices anymore. You we're now, for, for the last few you, movies you that you're just, picking... You can't just watch the you're, movies you're looking forward to. Yes, we, yes we can. No, you can. We can literally you choose movies to, that are good. You have to just watch what's out there. No. We could have chosen... Sometimes... I, I need... This needs to be said. So we got to see the movie. It could have been a hidden gem. We well, didn't know, and maybe it was. Let's hear what and you have why, to say And why about didn't it. we watch Home Team, then? It was out there. Oh, yeah. The, we didn't watch it. Exactly. I, to Murray's I, point, I, I didn't want to see either of them. I guarantee this was better than Home Team. I can guarantee it wasn't. And let me talk about Home Team. No, (laughs) but I saw the commercial for Home Team, and it looked funnier than this. So we got to see the movie Book of Love, and Merman and I had a viewing party to watch it. Oh, good! You got to enjoy it together. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Fantastic. So let me understand this. His book is terrible. Yes. And yet somebody published it. Somebody published his book, and even his publisher hated the book. So I'm kind of like, for it off the bat, I'm confused as to why the fuck this movie was made, let alone the book was published in the first place. Yeah. In English. Mm. Okay, so first off, it starts off with that. Then we get what I can only imagine is what a rom com covering not only one country, but two countries. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, my love of rom coms. I do. You do like them. I don't. Oh. It, it has the typical Mexican, Mexican threes company like plot, only done British Mexican style. So we got that also. British and, Mexican. And FYI, that's not necessarily a good thing. It had a couple of funny parts, but ultimately, it's a transcontinental rom com. Like something like I'm guessing Notting Hill or some other awful predictable rom com. Like it's predictable, Hill. annoying. Any Julia Roberts and Roberts oh, will be the same. <laughs> I said rom com a few times. Yeah. yeah. But actually it wasn't a rom com. Oh, what was it then? No, no. It was, it was a, a romance. Oh, there's some comedy in there. No rom com. No, it was it was literally when you look at the classification of it, it's a romance. I've romance. never, never seen that. Oh. Interesting. It has every trope, which is predictable. It's got the one gay character, the rich man, the poor lady, and everything is convenient and completely not my type of movie. Even though there is some Spanish spoken, it's pretty much unwatchable. I guess, again, I would like to thank Bryce for giving me another rage to have to watch this week. It's like I got a double dose. I am hating February almost as much as January. I know I said rom-com. I just need to say it again so that people realize the pain and suffering that I've had to go through. Uh, and as although Bryce is saying that there was some funny in this, 
It was not funny. It may be funny to you listeners listening to us about the amount of torture and pain that I was put through to have to watch this movie, but this was not funny. This was the most painful experience I've had watching a Mexican film ever. This movie mind fucked me like two dragons exploding into a flaming <laughs> volcano, and by that I mean into a hot rage. Use or that. another phrase that may make it a little clearer, mm. 50 shades of no way. Or better yet, Bryce, yes. uh, perhaps you can explain to us, is this kind of a similar plot to The Ugly Truth? Uh, no. Well, I don't know. Everything. Kind of? Sure. I don't know. There you go. It's they're an all, ugly mess is what it was. They're all bad. Mexican soap opera truth. And I have some unpacking to do, but let's hear what you two poor suckers have to say about this. Merman. Well, I broke one of my rules. Don't watch stuff on Prime. But since my buddy Jim invited me to watch it on his big screen. Uh, it is a big was, screen. It was a big ass screen. Uh, yeah, this is listed as a romance. Um, that's exactly what it was. So the first 20 minutes was promising, you know, nerdy English writer. It was, promote, right? He had to promote his book that was rewritten into a naughty Mexican Fifty Shades novel. That's good stuff. Uh, despite his inexperience with ever being in love. <laughs> or ever having sex, probably, for that matter. Probably that, too. He's a handsome dude. Uh, the premise was good, but the lack of I chemistry so. between the two of them was obvious, and the joke wore thin after the first half hour. Mm. <laughs> see, I didn't see there's a and, joke anyway. And the thing that really that bothered me is, yeah, he had to go to Mexico to promote his book, which he didn't even write, apparently. And how long does it take to get from England to Mexico? Like 10, 12 hours? Probably, yeah. Didn't learn a word of Spanish in those 12 hours. To go to Mexico. I, I was there on a cruise for like two days and I learned a little bit. Hola? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Cervezos. Gracias. Cervezos. Gracias. But yeah, so Por favor. He, he didn't even attempt to learn it till like near the end. Yeah, because he's like, a snobby British dude. Anyway. Sorry. Uh, snobby yeah, British this dick. This was basically a Hallmark film set in Mexico. Wasn't even as good as Telenovelo or whatever they call it. It was enjoyable, but it was a rage. It was what? It was enjoyable, but it was a rage because you and I enjoyed it. And oh, I, and that's I, right. Murray I spent, and I did enjoy and I spent raging the whole movie at it. Laughing. That's true. It was because enjoyable. we were laughing at it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what the enjoyment though, Murray was it was just you and I. We were together, spending time together on my couch, watching my giant screen. That's the true romance, right there. That's right. I love you, man. Back at you. All right, Bryce. Let's Tell us what you Bryce. think of your pick of the week. <laughs> Book of Love. Who suggested watching this piece of crap? <laughs> Apparently you. Oh. Having said that, it started out with promise. The concept is actually not bad and can definitely show potential for humor. An author whose struggling book finds an audience in a foreign land only to find out eventually that his book, while being translated, was completely changed into a trashy romance novel. That's not a bad concept, and if the movie stayed with that... It could have been successful. I honestly believe that. If you left the author oblivious to his work being changed as he did his book tour, not understanding the reaction he was getting from the audience of housewives and really uh, let that concept play out, they I'm could sorry. have had some. And, 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 okay. and, and numerous gay people. Can we, can we hold on to this for just a second? Are you literally trying to rewrite a terrible movie? Yes. Okay. Just so we're all clear here. Instead, within like 10 minutes, our author is told everything and we get some stupid stereotypes, an inexplicable plot device, as well as too many coincidences to count to drive this gag-worthy story forward. This was a crap fest. This was a rage. Okay. So can we unpack a few things here? Yeah. So what I don't get is, is there nobody else on the planet that knows that they maybe perhaps read the first book that also knows the second book in Mexico. Like, wouldn't it surprise somebody? It's like, you know that this book is, is not anybody that knows books. I'm not saying that's me, but you, who knows books would be like, oh, look, it's the top, top 10 book in Mexico right now. Wouldn't somebody look at, why isn't it selling anywhere else? Like, it was just every single thing that they were trying to bring out was just completely stupid. Either. Plus the fact, if this book sold... 
a million copies or more. Mm. I think you looked at the number on the movie screen, Marie. And it's like, and so she makes nothing off of that. Yeah. Like she's still working as a, a it sells a million copies and she makes yeah, no she money. Like $5 an hour for translating. I get, is that all? That's, and, and, and yeah, it's a million book, books, uh, a book, a bestseller would sell at least a million copies. I would think. And if he gets a dollar from every one of those books, he would be a millionaire by the time he went down to Mexico. Yeah, exactly. And apparently he wasn't. So it's well, I don't even know why I'm Exchange talking more about this. And There's yeah, well, banking it's pesos, fees. yeah, pesos and pounds. You yeah. bankers gouging everybody out it's of their hard-earned cash. Bankers do love to gouge. Yeah, whatever. It's true, but I'm not anyway, a banker anymore, anyway, so I don't care. Now you're a retired banker. That's right. I'm a retired banker. All right. Three-way. There you go. We haven't had a good three-way in a while, you two. This is awesome. All right. I uh, love me the three-ways. We also watched on Shudder. Dum, dum. Slap Face, which was added after we had decided. Yeah, to sprinkled on top. Uh, basically, after their mother has passed away and the father has basically deserted them, the brothers Lucas and Tom are left to fend for themselves. Living alone in a shabby house in the woods, Tom spends his days going to work and then going out at night to drink. Whereas Lucas roams about the woods and is picked on by bullies. Bunch um, of twins. Twins girl, are always yeah, bullies. Yeah, girls, nothing to make a difference. But yeah, and they're all bigger than him. So uh, When things get rough at home, they play a game of slap face. They take turns slapping each other. Uh, one day as Lucas is exploring an abandoned building, he comes across and befriends a monstrous being. Monsters. Though things seem playful at first, this monstrous being represents a greater danger than Lucas is aware of. Dum dum dum. Uh, I want to dum reiterate my earlier comment that Shutter is supposed to specialize in scary films, which this was not. And, and I find it really ironic that the real bullies in this anti-bullying piece are the only ones not killed. I appreciate the message. It just it just wasn't scary, and it suffered from a very slow pace. And we have an old man sighting, Dan Hedaya. Yeah. Who was Carla's ex-husband in Cheers, yes, and apparently also in Clueless. Yep. Um, yeah, I want to rage, but it's just a meh. All right. Why don't you go, Bracey? Yeah. Slap face. What I say. This tale of grief and loss and loneliness is raw and full of potential. It is bleak and dark, and I really wish I liked it more, but I didn't. I can't even put my finger on why the film did not resonate with me. I really have nothing bad to say about it, but I'm also struggling with something good to say about it. You know what that means. <laughs> So, you know, it was there. It was meh. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and I actually, I couldn't really even find bad reviews of it. Like, all the reviews online were good. So I thought it would be better. I would but... suspect they would, they'd all be neutral because it no, was just, it, it really did nothing for me. Well, why don't you hear what I have to say about it, Mr. Right, and Miss, right. Mr. and Mr. Smarty Pants? Mr. Slapface, go ahead. Mr. Slapface. Never played Slapface, I got to say. Uh, I think we could, as a team here, start, um, instead of starting a fight club, I think maybe we should start this summer with a club for slap face or slap club, if you will. No. What do you think? No. Who's in? No. I'm in. Except the first rule of slap face is that we never stop talking about slap face. Let's be completely opposite oh, to what I want to talk about. Not I want to talk not our, I want to talk about this movie. I want uh, to talk about our club slap face. Oh yeah, no, we can so talk if we're about playing that. slap face all I'm summer, confused. if we're playing slap face all summer, oh we're gonna talk about. That's it. what I'm trying. Yes, I'm saying the first rule of slap face is we'd like to talk about slap face. Do you want to join the club? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you want to join the club? It's literally the funnest game that you can ever play. It's now very, the rules are simple. I get exactly a film, a film based on constantly slapping a little CLF always sounds like it's going to be a good time to me. I mean, after like all, don't they always deserve it? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I gotta admit, though, 
I loved our little CLF, August Maturo. I thought he did a good job of, of acting. He does an outstanding um, job of being slapped a lot. And as Murray said, uh, Dan Hideo is amazing in his little tiny cameo that he does. I freaking love this guy. And, and did you notice that he hasn't aged in 30 years? He looked exactly the same. Except, he's except, like, well, except well, his voice, maybe. Wilford Brimley. He's he like the same. Like he was he's dying. like 47 his entire life. No, he's like 80 something. Yeah, I know, but he still looks 47 to me. He's got good plastic surgery. He looked fantastic. At least now that's settled. Uh, can't say I loved everything from Mike Manning as Tom. Music to me was very well done, <clears throat> and it really enhanced the story, suspense, and atmosphere. Jeremiah Kip, where did you come from? And I thought it was pretty good offering for his first. I mean, it's tough to compare our Malaysian film to this one. They're both the first offerings from their directors. So, There's I mean, they're no going to be directly compared. Uh, it had some good gore. It had some fucked up CLFs. It had pretty good monster FX for very low budget first outing. The story is nothing super original. There's a lot of creepy monster hanging out with the CLF, which kind of is a little awkward. Uh, and you don't really know exactly what it is, but you kind of think it might be a witch and then it couldn't be a witch. So there's a little questioning there. Um, I thought that, uh, it's been overdone this subgenre of I created a monster. Like I, I can think of like five off the top of my head that we watched in the last two years, right? Mm-hmm. Like this is a subgenre that's that it seems like it's like okay, unless you're going to come back and do something amazing with it, it it's it's not going to do something too great. Lots of questioning reality and mental Ill health challenges. It's a fun monster ride, but as the story isn't really complete or original, I liked it. And I like the ending, including the closing message, but I didn't love it. I have big hopes for Jeremiah Kip, though, if he does something that's not a I created a monster type movie. And it looks like he has a huge list on his docket. Like if you look at what he has his upcoming, he's got like something like 10 things coming up. So um, Slap Face, the club, is going to be Mondo. Slap Face, the movie, is a fun mental illness monster meh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let me just recap where we're at right now. All right. So we're at two Mondos that were the exact same. Yep. Two ra- Three Rages that were exactly the same. Yep. And three Mess that were exactly the same. What is Cap? This is like, if Murray can, didn't can, see can Jackass. I make, can I make a prediction? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Murray didn't my, see my Jackass, is this we will might not be a, agree on this the This may one. be the this only episode we've ever agreed on everything. That train. Murray. Let's mute you for the next one because sure. I think you did not enjoy this nearly as much you think? as the two of us did. All right. We went to the theater and saw a little Johnny Knoxville in a film. Dum Dum? Called Jackass. Dum Dum is right. Forever. Forever. And forever is a mighty long time. Ever. It's a mighty long time. Well, I think they're patching the torch. Patching? Passing the torch. They're patching it? I think they they brought in a bunch of new crew, yeah, and the old guys are probably all maybe, done. I mean, they got... Maybe, maybe, maybe I think not. they're passing it on. I think we'll they'll see. just be there as guys watching people. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. Anyways, Jackass Forever is exactly what anyone waiting to see this movie would have hoped for. There are wedgies and people being tased. There are vultures and bears eating from people's crotches as well as bees, spiders, snakes, and scorpions biting and stinging various various parts of the human anatomy. There are porta-potties being upturned. There are pro athletes delivering nut shots. People being launched into the air with various contraptions, plus penis Godzilla and literal, literal buckets of semen drenching various folks. And there's so much more. <laughs> But that is not all this installment of Jackass is. It is also about friends and family and hanging on to one's youth as long as humanly possible. None of the gags are malicious and everyone involved is rooting for one another. The aftermath of almost every stunt involves Knoxville and the gang laughing and showing genuine affection for each other as if they were all family. There are fathers and sons involved as well But really, Knoxville is sort of a father figure to this band of misfits. You can tell he loves these guys, and they really love him. There is a sweetness to how they interact with each other, you know, when they're not punching each other in the nuts. On that note, 
the nuts sack speed bag is something to behold. <laughs> Once again, this movie is not for everyone. But what movie is? I laughed more than any comedy that I've watched in years. I had a great time watching these friends coming back together, recapturing some of their youth, and genuinely caring for each other on a level that implies that they are not just friends, they are family. Jackass Forever will be forever Mondo. Swell. Mer, you should go next. You really think so, do you? Yes, I do. All right, then. Keep in mind that Murray does not like Johnny Knoxville. I don't mind him when he's actually in a movie where he's acting. Like, oh, small, okay. like small Apartments, which everybody should watch, by it's the way. It's a fantastic movie. It's a hazard. It's a crap fest. But that was terrible, it. yeah. Did you have to bring up that yeah. one? Yeah. Just I bring up like the best movie he was in. and then you. But Murray's a Duke's Hazard fan, so he probably didn't mind it. One of my favorite TV shows of all time. Ah. Uh, anyway. So what else did Johnny Knoxville ruin for you? part is Jay Shandra Sakar actually directed that, and I was like looking so much forward for him doing something other than with Broken Lizard. Anyways, I'm going on up a tangent. Yeah. You go ahead, Murray. Tell us what Johnny Knoxville. This is going to be short and vicious. Oh, right. Last week, I was the only one who went to the theaters. It's true. This week, I wish I had stayed home. Jackass Forever, which is about how long it seemed when I was suffering through this juvenile piece of crap. Stupidest thing I have ever seen on a movie screen. Uh, Contest is over. This will be the worst (laughs) film I will see in 2022. Oh, no. Hands down. (laughs) Uh, it doesn't even qualify as a movie. Movies have a plot, characters, and at least some semblance of a story. It had all of that. This disgusting turd fest had none of those. I think you missed the family dynamic. Uh, as the victim of bullies, practical jokers, and pranksters for most of my school life, I hate this stuff. There was none of that. And find none of it funny. Did you hear me laugh once? No, you did not. Uh, I've also seen enough ugly male genitals and idiots getting hit in the groin for a lifetime. Not sure I agree. Five words. 90 minutes of garbage. Rage. Rage garbage or garbage rage? Rage. Garbage. Rage. Period. Rage? rage is five words. Word. It is five words, too. It is. All I have to say about that. That doesn't word. surprise me, actually. But you know what? We got to give Murray tropes. He did say, I absolutely do not want to see this yes, movie. I know. And when I bought him and, his ticket, and, it kind of forced him to go. And, and I had basically had to close my eyes whenever there was, like, male genitals on screen. Are you afraid of male genitals? No, I just, it was disgusting. They're you delicious. Don't want to see it. It's yeah. awesome. Whatever. So, uh, I, interestingly enough... Murray's thought about bullying. I am also very anti-bully. Absolutely. I am, I am probably I. I am probably one of the most anti-bully peoples, and I absolutely hate, hate practical joke shows. I do not like uh, Aston thing. Kushers. Yep. I don't like anybody that's doing a practical joke where they're doing this joke at somebody else's expense. Yep. This movie, I'm sorry to say, Murray, is not that movie. Not even Every close. single person in this movie is choosing to be there to be a part of this adventure. Because they yep. have no life. No, they, no, it's because, to Bryce's point, this is a family that's been going on for 30 years. Yeah. These are friends that are so close that, you know, <laughs> they share showing their junk to each other. <laughs> it's like, I mean, you world. don't get any closer than knowing yeah. each other's penis size. This, this movie... Had so many funny parts in it. I I didn't stop laughing the entire movie. It was like my body was sore from laughing. And again, I have to re- reiterate this. I have to disagree with you, Marie. I did not find this bullying at all. I did. Yeah. Well, there that's was, unfortunate because yeah, because I also have been bullied in the past. I don't. That's why I don't like practical jokes. This is a bunch of friends getting together, doing silly things like starting a slap face club, and anything like that. I thought. Dickzilla was awesome. My favorite part in the entire movie was the dark room of snakes. Yep. That was literally the funnest thing I've ever seen. P.K. Subban hitting him in the cup so with that good. shot, which basically dented metal. The honey bear, the triple wedgie. Yep. Or 
to Bryce's point earlier, to get a dad and son yes. <laughs> coming together over a spider bite in the dad's face. Yep. I love this movie. I thought it was fun. I don't say I, I actually think that I don't necessarily love every Jackass movie. I think there I didn't was something, start. I don't know what it is. There was yeah. something special about this. I, I, I tend to agree with you. I think that they show more of the friendship of them. I think in this. that's what it was. And because there was there, that genuine camaraderie and the, and that, that like you could see the love that they had for each other. Like I'm not, oh, yeah. I'm not kidding right now. I mean, yeah. there was genuine feelings between all these people and yep. you could sense it. And them coming together, even like when you see Knoxville go into the hospital, or when anybody, when anybody they thought oh, they were hurt, they, they were, all went oh, running yeah. to see what was happening. Right. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing I would say about, and it's maybe not a negative, I, I find that this this film in particular, they say that these are all done by experts, and I'm trying to wonder where a 400 pound man is an expert yeah, at doing yeah, some yeah, of the things they not. were getting to do. These are not professional stunt Yeah, men. so yeah. I have a feeling there's stunt men and stunt coordinators and people around there, and I think they have hospital and attention, oh, they're, but they're. I, I, I would not, I don't think any one of these people, and I could be wrong, maybe I am wrong, maybe when they have actors who are heavy doing maybe the you know uh, Preston and we man are actual actual stunt men in their careers I don't know this right, and yeah. if they are then my comments here mean nothing but I really don't feel that they are and so I don't necessarily think even though they're putting their disclaimers up there this is not this is a uh, it's just like bunch of friends videotaping themselves doing shit to each other which i'm actually okay with when yep. we we start our slap face club in the summertime we'll uh, be putting it on youtube there you go and what was it slap club no and all we do is you talk about given slap your club. rating yet it's a mondo of course oh, it's a mondo. thank you it's a, i love it it's a total mondo i tell you temperature rising Vision blurring. Rage taking over. rage this week it's fucking valentine's day it's coming up on monday and i'm still mad at bryce my rage this week is bryce for making me watch that romance movie it was literally one of the worst movies i think i've ever seen i hated every single minute of it other than watching it with my merman it was terribly painful i hate romance movies i hate rom-com movies i hate com roms i hate i hate everything where it's polished turd of so, of something that it's the same plot over and over and over and over and over again. I don't understand how the people in our society will continue to go to these things. We're going to be I'm going to see a terrible movie. I know it's going to be awful. This coming weekend. I can't and it's only because... I, I can't believe we're even going to I this. know, because it's coming out on Valentine's hey, Murray, Day weekend. can you at least dare us to go? Because I... <laughs> I really don't want to see it either, but it's I've got... your I've, choice. I'm I literally not to go. Yeah, but we can't not go see anything, Murray. We have to see oh, stuff. yes, we can. No, well, you can. No, we have. But no, we you guys, can't. You guys refuse to see King's Daughter. That's yeah, true. there was but a see? lot of... Re but there was other things out. And, well... And Liam Neeson, apparently. No, he just refuses. Yeah, Liam I refuse, and I need to See, remind everybody. It's a free, it's a free, I have, it's a free country. I may we, end up seeing we that. We have a right of, to see what we garbage. want to see. But we'll see. back to my point, yes. Bryce, you're evil, yes. and yes. romance movies are awful, yeah. and and I'm not happy that this February is starting to look just as fucking bad as January. Oh, yeah. Because there's three movies terrible. coming out this week we're going to be watching, or some of us will be watching. I told you, it's not getting any better. This, I, is, this was my rage last week. I listed them all off. They're all I want to move to Japan, because at least we get to see Cube Japan. <laughs> That's the end of my rage. Japanese Cube. Japanese Cube. Please. Where are you? All right. Uh, 
Uh, my rage this week is very simple. One of the worst pieces of crap that was uh, released last year, Don't Look Up, has gotten numerous Academy Award nominations. The fact that it's up for Best Picture tells, you know, you got to narrow down that category. The fact that that category is like 47 films or whatever it is, is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous that they put Don't Look Up in it. That had to be the last one on their list. There's no way that this should have made the cut for didn't, anything. Um, it was Pig garbage. didn't make the list, and also uh, Pig didn't make the list, and no. also the, la- the um, French Dispatch did not make that no, list. No, neither of them made so, the list. So Don't Look Up got Wait. in, and Pig and, and French, and French Dispatch, Dispatch did, did not. not. Okay. That's, that's wrong. Just so we know. But you know what? Murray's probably happy because he loved that movie. Yeah. He probably so, does think it's the best movie of last year. Anyways, that is my rage that Don't Look Up is getting recognition and it is garbage it's the worst thing that mckay has ever done Ugh. it was meh rage subsiding pulse slowing anger fading 911 what's the nature of your emergency your world can change in the blink of an eye he walked into the bedroom and you know that she had been murdered. So he's running up and down, screaming, Oh my God, someone call 911. There are two men killing a girl. I know my son, and he would not go that long without saying anything to anyone. Safety can be an illusion and reality a nightmare. So how do you steal a person, a grown person? Unspeakable crimes can penetrate any small town, big family, pretty face, or innocent child, and in the wake of a loved one's murder or disappearance, there is nothing more cruel or desperate as silence. Why won't people talk about it? That's another thing. People don't want to talk about it around here. For the families of the missing and murdered, they gambled with their sanity as they lose hope in closure and settle for justice. That's where the cold case playing cards come in. In each episode of the Dealing Justice podcast, your hosts Jennifer Dubasek and Lori Jennings will spotlight one card from the cold case playing card deck. Hear the victim's story from the friends and family who knew them best. Her mom will never stop fighting until she finds out what happens to her daughter. Learn about the crime and help close the case. Welcome to season two. We're not just playing cards, we're dealing justice. You know what we're missing in our life right now? The Merman Minute. Well, oh, baby. I have a feeling we're going to be talking about the Oscars. Murray's got that don't look up you look know, on his face. It's funny you should say that. <laughs> it's funny that Bryce should also be talking about it. You know, after all the rage I was dealt by Bryce this week, this is going to make me the most happiest person on the planet. I doubt it. Well, Jim and Bryce knew it was coming. In spite of our I don't believe in award shows mantra, which I personally don't agree with, um, the Oscar nominations were announced yesterday. Okay, can I just ask you a question, though? Yes. Are you saying that the Oscars awards that they give out are more valid than what you believe is the best movie that you saw? This is, this is the ultimate reason that statement is in place, Murray. You're saying that the Oscars have more value I, than what you yourself I may put not value agree to a movie. With the choices, but I still respect the process, and I enjoy Ooh, award shows. The process is the most okay. Well, as someone who works in the film industry, mm-hmm. I respect it, and I hope to get one someday, maybe for a short. I hope that one day you'll get the Film Rage anyway, Award. That's what I hope. Um, Ironically, these two will actually care more about the films nominated than I do, since most of them were on their Mondo list from last year. Were they? Yes, they were. On hmm. mine. So here we go. All right, let's hear Best it. Best Picture, Belfast. Mondo. Coda. I don't even know. See. It was meh. And yeah, don't look up. You it was, on. it was meh. Drive My Car. It was Mondo. Mondo. Dune. Mondo. Rage. No, it was meh. I don't think it was. It was. I gave Go it a back. meh? Yeah, you did. King. I gave yes. a meh? Yeah, you did, because it's right. a great movie. King Richard. It was a Mondo. Mondo. Licorice Pizza. It was a Mondo. Mondo. 
Nightmare Alley. I gave it a mon. I gave it a meh. The Power of the Dog. It was meh. It was by meh, and all three of us. Yeah. The one you also want to agree with? West Side Story. Yeah, no. Which I refuse to see. Yeah. I saw it. It was a rage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best director, we have Kenneth Branagh for Belfast. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ryu Suki Hamaguchi, Drive My Car. Should he win. should win it. Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh, no, maybe Licorice not. Pizza. Maybe he not, Ray. He should come second. Close second. They don't give out seconds. <laughs> yeah, Drive My Car uh, should win. Jane Campion, Power of the Dog. Meh. And Mr. Steven Spielberg, West Side Story. No, just stop giving him nominations just because he's Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty, sure he's like a, pretty sure he's not going to like Why not? Already. They do that with Meryl Streep. Okay, we got <laughs> Best Actor. She stole how many from Glenn Close? Javier, sure saying, Mother best Fun Actor, Close. Javier Bardem, being the Ricardo. He was very good I actually that. haven't seen. I have. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, The Power of the Dog. He was also very good. He was good. Andrew Garfield, Tick, Tick, Boom. He was also very good. He was good, yeah. Denzel Washington for The Tragedy of Macbeth. Yeah, I need, I need to, I need to He's awful. That. And it's Will awful, yeah. Smith for King Richard. He, should he win. deserves it, yep. I believe he lost to Denzel last time, didn't he? Uh, well, he, 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 if ever he's going to win an Academy Award, it's, he hasn't won one. I have to make mention, no, though. he hasn't. He's been nominated quite a few. I have to. He lost in, to Ali, which he should have won. I, yeah. no, I have he, to, he should win this time. I have to mention, though, we watched The Tragedy of Macbeth, my wife and I. Did you? And yeah. about 30 minutes into it, she said, I cannot stand Denzel Washington's delivery of there you go. Shakespeare. And then, of course, he's Francis McDormand came on the, the screen, and she's like, how is she in this movie and he in this movie? And then she walked out and she didn't watch the rest. There you go. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, best actress. We got Jessica Chastain, The Eyes of Tammy Faye. She deserves she it. very good. She deserves it. Olivia Coleman. The she Lost deserves it. Daughter. She totally deserves it, too. Penelope Cruz, Parallel Mothers. I got to watch it. I haven't it. seen this yet it's either. It's supposed yeah. to maybe come out here. I don't know. Well, if it does, I'm going. Out here. Nicole Kidman, Being the Ricardos. She is very good. I assume she played Lucy. She did. She did. Kristen Stewart or Spencer. Yeah. Everybody's given her a lot of props on this one. She was okay. It was she she's was, Kristen she Stewart. She was in your favorite. Well, that was all things. She, she just was had in your, to vamp- be, your favorite vampire movie. She, she had to be just Kristen Stewart. She was yeah. very sullen in the whole thing and pouty and, you know. Kristen uh, Stewarty. Yeah. yeah. And we have one that I care nothing about. Well, almost nothing. Best foreign Best language film? international feature. Nice. What? To guarantee you guys have seen probably mm, well, almost all of them. Not all of them. But Drive My Car from Japan. Should win. Yeah. Flee from Denmark. Which actually should win. The Hand of God from Italy. Mm, I haven't seen that one. Lunana, a yak in the classroom from Bhutan. Oh, I have not seen it, but I, I want, want to. to see it. Yeah, me too. And the worst person in the world from Norway. Yeah, that one is getting like. Super I wanted to see it at the good. festival. I just didn't have time. I didn't realize it played at our festival. It did. I yeah. I wanted it was one of the ones I wanted wanted to see. But well, you know what we're going to be doing yeah, after worst Super Bowl. Person, worst there person in the world. I need to I need to watch. For there you sure. go. And then best supporting actor. Uh, Sierra Hines, Belfast. Yep. Troy Kotsur, Coda. Jesse Plemons, The Power of the Dog. I really liked him in that. He's right. good. Right. J.K. Simmons, Being the Ricardo. He was excellent in Apparently, that. Apparently, he played Ralph's neighbor. Yeah, he Fred. was so, so good. And that. Cody Smith McPhee, The Power of the Dog. Yeah. There's a lot of Power of the Dog it's love here in the dog. Yeah. And then, my front, last big ep- uh, category. Best Supporting Actress, Jessie Buckley, The Lost Daughter. Couldn't even tell you who that was. She Was she the mother? I love it. And was you she, saw the movie. Was she the mother? I don't know who she was. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see it. Uh, Remember? Ar- Ariana. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. did I? Yeah, the I Lost was, Daughter. Oh, man. yes. The Lost Daughter. Yeah. Sorry, Jay yes. Gyllenhaal. I'm thinking of the other yeah. movie yeah. you were talking well, who about. Was, who did she play? I had no idea. I think she was the, was the, the mother. I'm not uh, sure. Mother of the Kid? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, she's nominated. Uh, Ariana DeBose, West Side Story. Judy Dench, Belfast. Hmm. She did a good job. Kirsten Dunst, The Power of the Dog. And Anjanu Ellis, King Richard. Hmm. Yeah, she did a good job. Anyway, leading the nominations is The Power of the Dog with 12, including one for my man Cumberbatch and all of his co-stars. Jim's favorite, Dune, picked up 10. Nice. Though mostly in the 
to mostly in the tech yeah. categories yeah. and none for acting. Did it get nominated for the best music and score? Uh, might, I might sure as heck hope been. not. I hope so. Spielberg's box office. Here's, here's the whole thing. Uh, yes. For like yes. two hours. It was yes. loud. It was very loud. I like to listen to it loud at home every night. Spielberg's box office bomb West Side Story managed four, which doesn't make these two happy. And Belfast also received four. And the three-hour drama, the Japanese epic, Drive My Car, also received four. Should have 104. Among the big snubs this year yep. were everyone from House of Gucci. Yeah, that's a snub. The exceptional Katrina Valve from Belfast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And director Denny Villeneuve for Dune. Yes. No, that is not a snub. That is a snub. If and I've I can ever tell you, one. listening to actor Leslie Jordan was painful. <laughs> painful. He's a good comedy actor, but he has no place anywhere near an Oscar stage. Uh, he got all those foreign name rights, and he totally butchered Denny Villeneuve's name. He could not handle the French. He mm. announced it wrong like four times. Like mm. that's what you get with comedic TV actors, I guess. You got it, baby. Anyway, I personally will be watching you if these two won't. I will not. Uh, I'll probably maybe. Uh, I'll probably just look after. Maybe if we put money on it, you might. That's true. Okay, can I just sneak in? Can I sneak in on your on minute? my minutes? Yeah, just for. Just okay. For you mean his okay. ten minutes? Because <laughs> I think I think this is really interesting. There is a movie that got nominated for animated feature film. Yep. It got me. Uh, got nominated for documentary feature. Is it Flea? Yeah, and got that. nominated for international feature. There you go. How does a a film get nominated for animated because it's category. the best in every single it, thing. It is. It's Flea. literally the best movie of last what year. What happens though if Flea loses an animated feature to Raya and the Last Dragon, The Mitchells versus the Machines, and Canto? Canto will probably win. Like, then I will murder every single person in the Academy, and we'll get a fresh start. Yeah, because that is just I. If I will drive to if Hollywood. You're gonna put this in here. It better bloody well win is all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, the, the other movies don't even come. But you know what? And I don't want to complain about people on Twitter and Instagram who I love dearly. But they are in love with Encanto. Yes, they And are. I couldn't watch more than 15 minutes of it. Well, I don't watch cartoons, period. <laughs> but that's odd, eh? Best animated, best documentary, and yep. best international feature. I, th- I guarantee this has never happened in the history I don't of know, they, film. It seems like, yeah. like every year they, they keep like... Because they have like international feature is also nominated in best feature, yeah. and then animated feature also gets nominated in best feature. Yeah, it's like you had those categories for a reason, but whatever. But it's funny that it's an animated documentary. Yeah, so it's, it's, not, it's not very often you get that. You, you we have had it in the past for yeah. sure, but nothing anyway. that's the absolute best movie of last year. Anyway, it was good. There you go. It was the best movie of last year. I liked it. Okay. So the suspense you've all been waiting for, if you listen to last episode. Yeah. The Merman surprised us with a gift that just keeps on giving. <laughs> I was told to. He was, of course you're told to. That's your job. Get on the list, bitch. He was charged to find us some mesmerized to see if we can get one of them off the list. And he came up with which movie, Mer? Armageddon. Armageddon. I don't which had close creeps. my eyes. Yeah. I, I don't, don't want to fall asleep because I miss you, girl. Did. And I don't, don't want to miss a thing. Even when I dream of you. Oh, I can't do this anymore. The music in that movie is awful. I stopped yes. listening to Aerosmith after that, by the no, way. I still like Aerosmith. Yeah, that was for me, too. And, he was and, like, I loved Aerosmith what? until then. It was, it was right there, and they, they had started to become a human ballad machine, but then after that, it's like everything they released was a stupid power ballad, and I could not take yeah. it anymore. Yes. And everything had Alicia Silverstone in it. Oh. She was in every video. Oh. And they added Liv Tyler. Oh. Okay, well, we Sorry, got lots, of, we we got lots anyway, to talk about here. So we yes, had three. I was told to come up with two. And I alphabetized our list by first name. And those are the first two that popped out at me that I knew were in the same movie. Yeah, but then, then you realized, didn't realize. There was actually a third one who was further up on the list. 
So there's you got to look at the whole list. So there's Mer. three. And who are they? They are Steve Buscemi, mm-hmm. Will Patton, mm-hmm. and Peter Stormare. Really? All those were in? They were all in it. There are wow. so many great actors in this oh, movie. That it's, is true. It's cr- yeah, Ben Affleck was in and it. And Bruce Willis. No, I said good actors are Tyler. in this movie. Yeah, Ben Affleck, greatest yeah. actor of our generation or anybody else. And Bill, Billy no. Bob Thornton. No. So you know what? There's a reason why Ben Affleck is not on any of our lists. Although yeah, he because could, because you guys he have could, blinders when it comes it to could, the, it the could genius be because that he, is Ben Affleck. He could be on one it's list. Like, Except you're on the podcast. By far one of his worst movies. Ever. He's he's mostly repulsive for the most part. I mean, he he's may, fantastic. He may, have, he may have gotten no. be- a little better as he got older, but this was like when he was still young. He's been and in stupid. a couple of good movies. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's what I would say. He is always worth anyway, watching. I tolerated him as Batman. That's as he was fantastic as Batman. So there's was three, potato there's three Jason names. as usual. So we're gonna bump two of them, are we? Well, maybe if we all. Do the logic. I would like to say that this was not a fair fight. I I do not like the fact you that you don't it? You I don't do, even eat I donuts. I do not like the fact that this was the movie that is going to turf one of my favorite character actors. Maybe it will, ever. maybe it won't. Well, it you don't will, know. It, because I have to be I have to be honest and I don't want to be honest. You're because never I honest. I don't want him to be gone and I don't I don't want either of them to be gone. Well, there's there's one clear winner here in my opinion. <sighs> Yeah, I agree. Well, let's find out because the on the count of three, one, two, two three. three. All right, I'm happy. So Who's I will. I I took Steve Buscemi. So die. And Jim I took like him, but he's Peter Storm. Oh, he was he's Steve Buscemi was just being. He gave all the best. He, he gave best all the best lines. lines. Yeah, but best lines he wasn't the, the best actor. He, he wasn't mesmerized. Him. Anytime and Peter Stormare was, was on the screen, he, it was like it was. It wasn't a fair fight for. For Stormare, because it was, it he's was, on the screen with Ben Affleck, so it was like it was like watching a turd well, that was the whole thing. Right next to a, really a, a, a diamond. He had a bad Russian accent. He didn't have to worry about it. He was just being him. He was fantastic. Steve well, Buscemi by the was way, just like Will whatever. Patton was solid as usual. He was very solid. He wasn't yeah, he, mesmerizing. He, he was a great straight man. He was, but he was not mesmerizing. Like I said, he I, had nothing to work with. No, well, I picked the first two names that they knew were in the same movie. Well, if it would have been just between those two, unfortunately, Will Patton would be gone. Well, then that's your yeah. fault. You, you said two. I'm not I, saying I anybody's gonna, at fault, Murray. I was going to stick with two, but we you, still you, have you another chance. A, you made us uh, have three. Wasn't there an Armageddon two? I'm no. trying to think whether <laughs> it was between Stormare and Patton. Oh, not, Stormare would have won. I'm for not sure. sure that I would have won. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, anyway. it doesn't really but matter. It anyway. wasn't, so it doesn't matter. Okay, while we're on the topic of Armageddon, yes, I think I think we I think we know I, where this I think, is going. I think repulsive has to be brought up. Yes, I would. I, I think you're maybe right. And I I assume this is going to be unanimous, but who knows? I I don't know how these the brains are like. You okay, guys. so I put my hand in the pot that I 100 percent agree that Ben Affleck is repulsive. Yes, I agree. That's two. I'm sorry. What do you say? I say Ben Affleck is mesmerizing and undoubted. Uh, and never gonna happen. Maybe the best actor of. Well, no. Okay, I, sorry, so let me qualify. He so is the best actor of mine or anybody else's generation. And what I say is, if and Bryce way, ever takes a holiday, <laughs> guess who's making guess who's going up? Guess who's going right. up? Repulsed. Ben Affleck <laughs> is. <laughs> The best. I would literally crawl out of my deathbed to come. At any rate, let's get let's that. get serious. <laughs> so thirty for a years, minute. thirty years from now, B- Bryce takes a holiday. Murray's dead. He comes back from the dead as a zombie. Just a just vote. A no. vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who are we who are we thinking is repulsive? There's from, a- Bruce Willis, right? No. He was pretty repulsive. Bruce Willis is He's doubted. Repulsive. He's not repulsive. He's not repulsive. How He's can just you say doubted. Bruce Willis is repulsive? He's just doubted. He's I'm just sorry. He's doubted. Okay. But this person is repulsive. <laughs> and I would be shocked if you don't have... Uh. Anyways, long story short, I nominate Liv Tyler to the repulsive list. You mean Aerosmith Steven Tyler's daughter? Yes. The one and How only. Could you? She I don't want to. I want to close my eyes every time she's. Um, I want to fall asleep every time I saw her on the screen with Ben Affleck. I wanted to slit my throat. Oh, yeah. I wanted to throw up. A, in fact, I think I did. Every, I think I did every time I see her in anything, I feel like. And why? she ruined what could have been a good song by a Canadian song artist. 
Uh, Ultimately, it was a Canadian it's a three-way. Right? Yes, absolutely. We all agree yeah. for once. Liv, Liv Tyler is Liv repulsive. Liv Tyler is yep. ultimately yep. repulsive. Thank you. She ruined the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Is she in it? She was. <laughs> she in the first one? I don't remember her. She's in all three, Murray. I don't know. I barely, barely remember the first one. <laughs> There's a lot of walking. Yeah, that's why you loved it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of walking. I know. PJ! Alrighty. Last week on Rage or Dare, Jim came back to life when he picked the 1993 Zomcom film, My Boyfriend's Back. This week, Bryce and Jim are together again and get to Rage or Dare. Let's check in with Jim and see if every zombie movie for him is a mondo or some of them should stay dead and buried. Hmm. What say you, Jim? Hmm. On the plus side, it's got Edward Herman, a.k.a. Evil Max from The Lost Boys, and the brilliant Philip Seymour Hoffman, Hmm. who would possibly be undoubted if he hadn't have made so Hmm. many... Mocking J type movies. Mm, yeah. And motherfucking Cloris Leishman, who is a goddess. She's good. And we all get to know this about 10 minutes into the movie. So I was so excited to know I was going to, and I've seen this movie before, by the way, but I've forgotten completely about it for multiple reasons. Uh, so at about 10 minutes in, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be great. Philip Seymour Hoffman in a movie? He's never, he's not, he's never not in a good movie. Apparently. So this has a feel as you're watching it, uh, kind of like it's an episode of the Munsters or the Adams family, except it's not funny. Although at times it's so bad that it's funny. The whole thing is nobody thinks it's strange that a dead guy comes back from school. Plus the fact that, that he wasn't even her boyfriend, so the whole title of the movie doesn't even make sense. So I, I couldn't apparently follow what was happening, as apparently I'm, sorry. I'm an idiot. So my boyfriend's back. Yes. So the the boy... Friend. Friend wasn't was, actually her boyfriend? No. Well, that's dumb, then. It was dumb. Could they not have but, written it so that he, but he was her boyfriend? She, he became her boyfriend. After he's a zombie. After yeah, he after did. he's a zombie. Well, that's ridiculous it, oh but it get it gets better bryce <laughs> what is going on uh, so apparently i'm an idiot i'm like why jim can't you understand these complex plots and stories bad jim bad bad jim but the worst was i think, you think they were somehow the trying to tie some anti-zombie sentiment into some kind of race thing, kind of. I don't know, uh, which was very off-putting, to say the least. It's like this zombie was like, they were all anti-zombie. Like, it was kind of fitting, like it was like he was a, his own race, and it was like they were being racist against the zombies. Yeah, he's a fucking were, zombie eating people. There were people. zombie bigots. Yeah, there were zombie bigots. It was it was so weird and awkward. It was just I I had no. It was it was uncomfortable to say the least. Huh. Plus, every single person, except the people I've talked about already, uh, Philip and Cloris and uh, Herman Munster, uh, adjacent, were all completely awful. This movie was the acting was, was completely awful. As far as rom-coms are concerned, it's probably the best rom-com I've ever actually seen. But considering I hate them, every rom-com is terrible, so that's really not too telling, I guess. Yeah. As far as zom-coms go, it's probably the worst zom-com. Yeah, there's actually been quite a few. Uh, there's been a lot of zom-coms. Yeah, warm, bodies, warm Bodies was fantastic. Was it was a mock yeah. So that also doesn't say much to it. To sum it up, uh, it wasn't bad for a rom-com. It was terrible for a zom-com. The story and acceptance of everyone that he eats people and the idiotic idiotic attempts at humor. Plus, all in all, it was a terrible, 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 terrible rage of a film. I didn't laugh at all in the movie. I don't even think they were trying to make it funny. I don't even know what they were trying to do with this. I thought it was a comedy. <sighs> it, I, I, it, I, so you couldn't even like identify attempts at comedy? Uh, no, I didn't get it. Like it was, I was, I maybe I just wasn't in on the joke. I, I don't, I didn't find it funny. I, it was just, 
Yeah. I thought you might like this one. I was hoping I was going to like it. But remember, I had seen it before. Yeah. And I thought, You huh, wiped it from your memory, I remember though? Cloris Leachman was in it somewhere. Oh, that's true. And I, I love her. Yeah. So, according, apparently... According to trivia, it's also Matthew McConaughey's first film. Matthew McConaughey was in this? Or in IMDb, he was. Huh. huh. Um, Obviously, he wasn't a starring role. I didn't think I'd ever say this before, but all, apparently all zombies at least have a Mondo moment in it. Mm. Because Cloris Leachman and Philip Seymour Hoffman were Mondo. Right. But... Yeah, uh, there was about one movie minute of them being Mondo in the movie, and the other hour and twenty five minutes was me raging. They had a couple of lines though; they were pretty good. Yep. Say good night, sex boy. <laughs> That's pretty good. It was pretty good, uh, and maybe the more popular for this film rage. I may use this a couple times. Oh, hi there. I'm Murray. <laughs> 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 when that came on, I was like, "Yeah, you are, baby." <laughs> or the more popular one. Oh, shut up, you zombie slut. I liked your first one the best. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of kind of partial to that. Oh, hey. I'm Murray. Right? That's Pretty sure. good. Uh, right? I, I, I would know because the context I, I'm, is... I'm Merman. That's true. You? Oh, hi there. I'm Murray. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's me. It's Jimmy. <laughs> This was terrible. I. It was a zombie movie, though, so it had that going for it. All right. For two seconds. Okay, then. All right, what do we got to do this week? <laughs> Which pain and so- I'm going to watch three movies in theaters, possibly, most likely two, which both will be rages. And now I'm going to watch what that's going to make me rage. This is like the worst wow. February yeah, ever. Well. We got to we got to pick. Are we? What ra- are we picking? Are, are we? Or dare? Are we picking for Merman? I think it's Merman's oh, time. Give us your juice, Mer. Yeah, let's go, Mer. Pour your go five gallons of pig semen in my face. Mm. He's shaking his, shaking his money maker and his ice cream bucket of rage. Bucket of rage. We're pulling out. Put some more in there, I guess. Mm, this feels good. This feels like rage. This the one. Guess who? This is a movie? Uh, yes. What's Guess Who, It's a remake of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner with the great Sidney Poitier. I believe this one has Bernie Mac in it. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Seriously? Oh, oh this is... Ashton Kutcher. Oh, this is a remake of Guess Who's... Oh, yes. no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was not <sighs> made for TV because I have a DVD. Right no, there. I know. It was in the theaters. Uh, yeah, I never saw this. Oh, Sherry Shepard's in this. I like her. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah, isn't Aston Kutcher on our repulsive list or undoubted list? No, I don't think he's on either. Here's the here's the sentence. I don't know that. Either. His house, yeah. his rules. Some in laws were made to be broken. Even the text sounds hilarious. Gotta, it even has a gotta, blockbuster sticker on it. You got to flip to the back there, Jim, to get the the true. Let's see. They, there's a big sticker over top of the the quote from Earl Earl Dittman of Wireless Magazine. See, I love was, the name Dittman. It was, it was so good that the quote that they put for the review is from Earl Dittman from Wireless Magazines. <laughs> Brilliantly made date movie. Oh God. At, and buddy comedy all in one. That's the quote. That These are say. the two least favorite things that... If it, is there a music singing in it, then it's already... If it was a period piece... Okay, yeah, it's I... It's like Zoe, what's her name? Yeah, Zoe yeah. Saldana's in it. Can I please... So that's cool. I like her. Can I her. please be hospital... Can I get COVID this weekend, please? So, I so maybe in this case, instead of the white girl bringing... Yeah, it's, it's, black guy it's, to it's, dinner. It's, it's opposite. It's, yeah, the black girl. So they did a spin. Guy. This is so creative. It's a, it's a remake. Oh, Sean Edwards of Fox TV says, Bernie mm-hmm. Mac and Ashton Kutcher are flat out hilarious. There you go. Hmm. Well, I'm looking forward if to this now, so, now that he said so. It must be true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right then. Well, 
This was a painful experience for me for this coming week. That's all I can say. Well, thanks, Ragers, for listening. Thanks to all the extended Film Rage family, uh, who you can find on our show notes. Find us on social media everywhere at Film Rage YYC. Check out everything Film Rage at FilmRageYYC.com, including our merch site. For our Redbubble and T-Bubble, and T-Bubble, it's got some sales, so go buy some shopping and get your Oscar shirts now. But make sure you get those Film Rage Oscar shirts because they're on sale. I don't know how many times I have to say this. We're always wanting to make this a raging blast for our listeners, so please comment, like, and subscribe, and send us emails to filmragecalgary at gmail.com. Dare to see terrible movies to feel our rage. But no matter what you do, please make us rage. Please. Please. Mm. And that's it for this week. Rage on. Rage on.